Welcome to uh, Inner Systems uh, Platforms uh, and Fire STU3. Um, initially, actually, the title of this presentation was Inner Systems Iris for Health and Fire STU3, but because the announcement of the release was made today, um, so that's why we re renamed it you know, uh, uh, prior to the release, but now I'm free to actually say the name of the product, which is Inner Systems Iris for Health. So um, in this presentation, the focus is gonna be about um, how FHIR is supported uh, in, uh, in InterSystems Iris for Health. Um, my name is Craig Lee, I'm a product specialist for InterSystems Iris for Health, and today I'm co-presenting with my colleague here. Um, he'll and uh, I'm Mark Munt, I'm a sales engineer with uh, End User Healthcare. Yep. Sure. Oh, oh yep. you can. Sorry. Okay, so um, as Craig said, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, FHIR support within our products. Um, so we'll start with a little bit of background on FHIR for those of you that may not be as familiar. Um, then we'll talk about the FHIR STU3 support uh, in the latest versions of the products. Um, and uh, then we're, we'll talk through um, some example, uh, an example use case for how you can work with FHIR uh, in our interoperability solution. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, yeah, let me do, for those of you uh, not too familiar with FHIR, uh, I'm gonna do a quick overview of the FHIR standard um, and a little bit more about uh, the FHIR resources. So FHIR stands for Fast uh, Healthcare Inter Interoperability Resources, and it is the newest uh, standard from HL7 for exchanging healthcare information. And um, the interesting thing about FHIR is that uh, unlike uh, the existing standards like HL7v2 and CDA and others, it, the entire specification is actually online and it's maintained and published online at the address shown, uh, shown right there. And as the name suggests, um, it, is, it, cent it centers around this concept of a resource, which essentially is a data model that encapsulates a certain um, clinical and administrative uh, uh, clinical situation or concept, like patient, medication, you know, observation, and things uh, like that. Um, and the model of resources are expressible uh, as either XML or JSON um, by, by the standard. And in addition to the resources, uh, FHIR standard, it provides a very well-defined um, set of RESTful API uh, that enables client-server interactions. So these include uh, creation, you know, create, um, update, read, and search, and various operations that could happen between a server and a client um, using the FHIR resources. And the key thing to note here for the FHIR standard in comparison with existing, existing standards is that FHIR resources, along with the RESTful API, they provide both the structural and semantic compatibility across multiple uh, uh, interoperability paradigms. So in the diagram shown there, you'll notice, uh, for example, in the messaging paradigm, you know, the king is H07v2, and you have an entire specification around that. For example, for documents, you have CDA, the CCDA, and you know, hundreds of pages specifying what a CDA document is. Um, so, and then there isn't too much of a compatibility across these paradigms, but with FHIR, you're really essentially dealing with the same set of FHIR resources. So a patient resource in a, mes in a messaging or in a message is the same patient resource that you will find in a, in a document bundle that represents a document. So that's really the, the power of the, stand, the FHIR standard uh, in the sense that it really simplifies uh, the framework in which you can exchange information. So let me uh, just, just quickly talk about the resources because it really centers around uh, resources, the data model is central to the framework. So uh, FHIR resource, it is the smallest unit of transaction in FHIR. And it is similar to, um, for example, a, an object or class in programming. So it, uh, con it's self-contained, it contains a uh, discrete unit of data, it's defined, uh, it's, it specifies a, spe a specific behavior and, and meaning. And once you actually have it stored in a FHIR resource repository, uh, each resource is given a unique uh, URL, uh, URL, um, URL to, uh, to identify it. And a resource can reference other resources, and uh, the FHIR standard is built on an 80-20 rule where the 80% of the, the elements 
cover the most common use cases, and other cases are covered by extensions, and there are ways to further customize, you know, restrict, uh, for example, cardinality of a certain element in a resource, for example. So that's, uh, we refer to that as uh, resource profiling. So there is that aspect to it where you could extend the existing uh, base model to meet your uh, specific use cases. And one interesting um, resource that I'm gonna just talk about is the bundle resource. A bundle resource is a special container resource that it's, it's, an, it's an array uh, con uh, of a container of different resources that are relevant to a particular interaction, for example, between a server and, uh, and a client. And here um, is a, a snippet of um, a, here in this case, a condition resource represented um, in XML. So now uh, let me talk about uh, versions. So the current official version of FHIR is STU3. It stands for Standard for Trial Use 3. Um, and it was published back in 2017. And as part of the specification, it now uh, it defines over 115 resources. Last time I counted, uh, I think it was 117 but um, it might be one or more or less, depending on how I count it, but officially I couldn't find the, the official number, but it's over 115. And still, the, most of the resources are at uh, maturity level two, uh, two, two or three, um, in, in the scale of one to five, but several resources have reached, the, uh, reached uh, stage five. Compared to the previous release, which is DSTU2, there are numerous uh, breaking changes uh, for example, a, a resource was renamed. For, so, for example, there was a conformance resource that was actually renamed to uh, capability statement resource. There are instances where they have actually merged, uh, merged two resources into one. So you, uh, previously we had a medication order and a diagnostic order, but now that, those two have been merged into uh, one resource called medication request. Um, at, um, so the next version that is expected sometime this year, most likely at the end of this year, is uh, called R4. It's, an, it's a release four of the FHIR standard. And finally, and, and at last, we have a couple of uh, core resources reaching the normative status. Um, most vendors have uh, started transitioning you know, already to st 3 IHE has already officially updated their IHE profiles uh, um, IHE uh, profiles such as PDQM and PIXM based on STU3. So now, um, let me quickly talk about how FHIR is supported in InterSystems Iris for Health. The current version is 2018.1. Uh, so uh, InterSystems Iris for Health covers both the previous release of FHIR, the STU2, and the current release, uh, which is STU3. And here are the key components. Um, to start out, we have the key components for building the Fire Server and, and, and a client application. And the Fire Server uh, internally includes a Fire Resource Repository that's capable of directly storing individual Fire resources in either XML or JSON. And using these components, you could, you could build your Fire-enabled applications, uh, be it a server or a um, client application. And on top of, and at the base level, at the foundation level, um, the product provides an internal object model for representing each and every um, Fire resource and, and data types that are defined under the Fire specification. And along with that, we also have a, an internal model for, message, um, for FHIR request and response messages so that you could formulate a, a FHIR search, for example, a search request out to a server and then be able to receive a response and represent that as an internal model so that you could um, build out your solutions. Additionally, we also provide a default set of DTLs, so data transforms, and also uh, class, internal class methods for converting to and from SDA. So SDA is our internal data model um, for capturing patient and clinical information. So we provide the DTLs where we, you can consume fire into SDA, and then also there are DTLs to go from SDA 
to fire. But once you have the data in SDA, um, you can make use of existing artifacts, conversion artifacts that are already provided uh, in the product to convert it to other formats, for example, HL7, CDA, uh, CCDA, different versions of CDA. So that gives you the flexibility to consume data and then turn it into any other format that you, uh, your specific use case is, uh, is looking for. And um, in addition to that, we are providing a new page uh, called Fire Annotations uh, in the management portal. And this is a page, a UI page, where um, a, a user can search for a particular resource and then, and then see, really visually uh, see the, the view, um, the field mappings from SDA to FHIR and FHIR to SDA. So, for example, if you're wondering how is the data actually getting mapped into SDA and how am I actually exporting that to another format, you could use uh, the FHIR annotations to get a higher, a high level uh, view of those mappings. And lastly, um, as just mentioned before, uh, we provide support for FHIR-based IHG profiles, namely uh, PIX-M, PDQ-M, and uh, MHD. Uh, these are the FHIR equivalents of PIX, PDQ, and XDS-V uh, for document exchange. So all of these components are available um, in the product by, uh, out of the box. And you can you know, um, assemble different components together to fit your specific application needs. So now, um, given this set of capabilities, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand things over to Mark, and he's going to talk about a specific use case where he uh, built a solution, built a service using um, um, the different conversion mechanisms and the SDA to fire convert, um, uh, DTLs and other components to um, satisfy a, um, a certain use case. So here we go. Thank you, Craig. Um, so before I get started, let me just uh, ask everybody quickly, uh, who here has worked with our interoperability solutions, uh, Health Connect, Ensemble? Okay, so you guys are familiar with the, the machinery of how that works? Okay, that's good, because we're gonna be looking at a bit of that. Um, who has worked with Fire so far? Great, okay, so you guys are, are roughly familiar with the structure of Fire and the concepts of resources and resource bundles and all of that. Okay, and last question, uh, who knows what SDA is? Okay, does anybody not know what SDA <laughs> is? Okay, SDA is uh, InterSystems XML-based uh, format uh, for basically containing uh, clinical data. So it would be uh, for storing data that's similar to what you'd find in a CCDA or other documents like that. It's just our own particular format for that. Um, so that's gonna come up in some of the examples here. So um, as Craig said, you know, as we were talking about uh, preparing for this presentation, we thought we needed a way to make this a little bit less abstract for people and, and give you sort sure. of a concrete example. Uh, so we started talking about, um, let's find a simple use case that we could use uh, where we can build out a solution and use that as a, as a, a way to give you an idea of how you can uh, work with Fire within our interoperability solution. Uh, and around that time, I happened to be working with two of the gentlemen that are in this room uh, Randy and Kieran back there, uh, and they had brought to me a very interesting use case, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I hope you guys don't mind, but I cribbed that for this, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we'll be talking about today. And, and that use case is uh, the idea of making a very simple REST-based service available where a client or a requesting system will pass us a patient MRM, and we're going to pass them back a fully formed CCDA document, okay? And of course, because this is a fire session, uh, the way we work fire into this is um, all of this, the source for all of the data that we're going to put into that CCDA is going to come from a fire repository. Okay. Um, uh, to make it a little bit more complex, and this was an interesting part of uh, the use case from those guys, uh, you know, the requesting, the requesting system that's asking us for the CCDA is only looking for very straightforward PAMI data for, for patients. So that's problems, allergies, medications, and immunizations. They don't care about the full patient record. They don't care about all the encounters and observations. 
and they don't want to receive a huge CCDA that contains all of that stuff that they don't need, and we don't want to process all of that data that we don't need. So um, another sort of wrinkle to this is we need to, uh, we need to request each of those resource types separately from the Fire server. Uh, for those of you that have already worked with Fire, you probably know that there's a very cool little um, uh, modifier that you can add to your uh, Fire request called dollar everything uh, that will return you to the entire patient record in a single Fire request. Again, we don't want to process all that data, so in this case we're going to request each thing separately uh, and then we're going to uh, bundle it all together uh, and transform that into the, the CCDA. All right, so how are we going to do this? Um, and uh, uh, Craig already alluded to a number of these features, um, but we're going to use a number of features that are uh, available in uh, Iris for Health uh, that really do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And the goal here is for you to be able to treat fire like you would uh, the other message types that you're already used to working with in, in, in Ensemble or Health Connect uh, without having to write a lot of fire-specific code. Um, so, uh, the elements that we provide that, that sort of facilitate this are, um, at the top here, we have Fire Business Operation. And this is responsible for doing all of the RESTful interactions with your Fire repository, okay? So you don't need to write any HTTP code uh, that's going to make requests uh, and then do something with the responses. Um, you can basically create a little request object um, which contains uh, a reference to which Fire repository you want to hit against, which resource you're requesting or inserting, uh, and then an identifier that's necessary for that. Uh, and then you're going to receive back a similar uh, response object that contains the Fire payload that came back from the Fire server. Um, related to that uh, is the service registry. Uh, which allows you to uh, store all of the information about your Fire endpoint uh, in a convenient registry, so you don't need to change your code, um, you don't need to hard code this in there, uh, and that can include all of the details necessary, like the IP address, the ports, uh, the, author the authentication information, credentials, and, and so forth, and then you can just refer to that uh, by the repository name going forward. Um, next, so uh, as Craig mentioned, we also have a complete fire object model. So for those of you that are familiar with object script and with DTL, um, we, can we can represent fire resources as objects, which allows you to very easily uh, manipulate them using DTL uh, and other programmatic ways. And, and we're going to see that uh, in this uh, use case, uh, we use that uh, a DTL using that object model as a way to consolidate our five separate bundles because we're requesting four different resource types plus the patient record, and we need to consolidate that all into a single bundle. And we were able to do that very easily using DTL using that fire object model. Um, and th this one is what I, I think is very cool. So you guys already know what SDA is, um, and you know what fire is. Uh, we now have a, a set of APIs that will transform automatically from Fire to SDA. So as long as you pass it a valid Fire bundle, doesn't matter what resources are in there, it's going to generate a valid SDA from that. Um, so SDA uh, becomes your sort of middle layer, sort of transfer, uh, transfer layer, um, and then you can, trans you can transform from SDA to other formats uh, as you need. And as some of you may know, uh, out of the box we include um, SDA uh, transformations that go to and from uh, a lot of the standard formats like various CCD types. So we'll be using that uh, as well. Oh, and I was just gonna say, so our, the API for doing a transformation from uh, Fire to SDA is just a single method call. So it really literally can't get much easier than that. Okay, so this is just a, a quick look at what this, our solution looks like, all right? So we have our, our user over here, which is actually not gonna be a user, it's probably gonna be a, a requesting system, uh, but they're going to send an HTTP request through our RESTful service, which contains the MRN. Now this, this blue box at the top is, is our, our main BPL business process, which is sort of orchestrating everything. And we'll see that business process in a minute. Uh, it's actually much simpler than it looks on the screen here. Um, so we're sending the MRN, in, MRN into that, uh, and then it's adding a list of resource types that we want to request, and sending those 
to um, another business process that, process that we've created, uh, which is responsible for fetching all of the fire re resources we want uh, and then consolidating them into a single fire resource bundle, uh, again, using the DTL like I mentioned. Um, it is interacting with uh, the fire operation, which I had mentioned, uh, which is uh, the fire operation takes care of all of the interactions with the, with the fire server. So we're requesting four, actually five different resource types, uh, and then we're gonna bundle them all together, and we're gonna send them back up into the business process where it's going to call that one line uh, transformation call that I showed you, uh, transform from fire to SDA. We're gonna send that through our standard XSLT transformation component, and we're going to tell it to use one particular XSLT style sheet which uh, transforms SDA to CCDA version 2.1. And at that point, we're almost done. We now have um, our CCD uh, as XML, and we just need to send that back, and it's gonna go back out through our REST service back to the requesting uh, system. So any, any questions so far? Yep. When, what version is the Fire 3 to SDA 3 transformation? Uh, it's, it's, well, I'll let Craig answer that question. Sure. Um, for Iris for, uh, for Health, uh, it's available now as of this morning, so the version for that is, yep. Yep. Sure. Okay, yep. Uh, for for healthshare right now, um, if you're look, if, if you're talking about healthshare information exchange, a uh, portion of the support is available as um, as part of 2018-1 of information exchange, uh, but internally only the SDA to fire side of uh, transformations are available as of that release. Um, uh, not not for information exchange, but it will be included in a future release. Uh, of information exchange, but if you're looking at uh, both the SDA to fire and fire to SDA for STU3, uh, then that support is only currently found in InterSystems Iris for Health, which was released uh, you know, th this morning. Yeah. Uh, and actually that, that reminds me of something I forgot to mention is um, in addition to uh, having out of the box transformations from fire to SDA, we also have the, the return trip from SDA to fire. And, and uh, just one more thing to point out, the fire server component there, uh, right now for the demo, we are using the information exchange uh, for, for, to, to simulate the, the server, uh, serving up different resources. Yeah, so. if, you, if you guys have seen some of the other presentations, we're referring to that component in information exchange as ODS, the operational data store, and that's accessible by fire. So just for this purposes, these purposes, we're using that as our demo fire repository, uh, but we could, it yeah, against it any standard any, so. Fire SDU3 sure. repository. Okay, so let's take uh, let's get out of um, the evil uh, PowerPoint and, <laughs> and take a look at something a little bit more concrete. Uh, so this is just a standard. This is advanced REST client. Some of you guys might have used it. Uh, it's sort of like Postman. Uh, so I'm just going to show you that this does in fact work. Um, so up here we have a, a URL we're going to hit against. We're going to make a GET request to to this path, and we're going to pass uh, an MRN, which happens to be the only Oh, okay. Well, I think That's, we need to um, no, I we see. Need to, oh, I think we need to escape out of the presentation. Um, oh. Here, yeah. oh, yeah, I see. Okay. There we go. Thank you for letting me know about that. Ah, this looks better. Okay. Uh, this is advanced REST client. Um, so we have our URL up here, very simple. We're passing it a URL uh, with uh, the MRN that we want to request. And we issue our GET request and back we get a standard CCDA version 2.1, okay? So let's take a look at what is going on sort of behind the scenes there. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Okay, so um, for the Ensemble Health Connect aficionados out there, here's our, here's our production. And uh, to see where the real magic is happening, let's take a look at the message trace, which is one of my favorite things to look at. So this is the request that we just processed. Uh, and this is, you know, we're, we'll, we'll trace through the steps here, which is, is sort of similar to what we looked at with the diagram a second ago. So we have our, our MRN request coming in from our fire service. 
Uh, and then we're, we're adding a list of resource types that we want to request. So we're, we're passing the patient MRN, and this is just a little custom message type that we've created for this purpose. Uh, and then we have a list of resource types that we want to request. And this is just to tell the next business service what request it should make, and then it's going to consolidate them all into a single bundle for us. Uh, so when we pass that to our next business service, it's going to go out and send a bunch of requests to our fire operation uh, and get the responses back. Now this looks a little bit like spaghetti and it's all snared up and that's because the nice thing is we can send these all as asynchronous requests. So we don't need to wait for each one to come back before we send the next one out. We can send them all out in parallel and hopefully they'll all come back at roughly the same time and save us a little bit of time. Uh, so we got those back. We uh, assemble them into a single uh, fire bun resource bundle uh, and then transform it into SDA. That doesn't show up in the trace because it's happening, it's, it's being run in the context of the business process. Uh, but then we have the SDA, and we can send that out to our standard XSLT transformation component, and we can tell it which style sheet we want to use, which again, this is our out of the box CCDA version 2.1 style sheet. Uh, and then it's just going to run that through an, our normal XSLT processor and return to us um, our CCDA. Uh, which one we're then going to send back to the client. Okay, any questions about this part? I'm talking about a fire bundle, yeah. Yeah, so a bundle yeah. of resources. It, um, did, it did not go away. Yeah, bundle is still bundle um, yeah, in ST3, yep. You have to get the patient too. Yep. Uh, and actually, we'll see this when we look at the business process. Um, we, well, actually, I'll just hold off and we'll talk about that when we get to the business process. <laughs> um, okay, so let's take a look at the business processes. Um, the first one is that big blue box that was at the top of the diagram, and this is our orchestrating business process. And this is delightfully simple, right? We're doing three very simple things here. Um, first, we're making a call out to our other business process, which is the message we saw with all that list of resource types. Uh, and we're just requesting that it, it uh, send us back that consolidated bundle. Um, after that, we're going to do our transformation, which is calling that single uh, API method call that transforms it into SDA. Uh, and just for convenience, um, in it, so I didn't have to put any code in my BPL, I wrapped that, and we'll see that in a second, I just wrapped that API call in a transformation class, which um, I don't know if you, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, so then I can just use the standard transform call in BPL to handle that. Uh, and then after that, we do a call which sends it to the XSLT transformation service uh, and re returns that to us. So this is the simplest one. Um, the uh, other business process that we have is the process that um, fetches uh, all of the fire resources and consolidates them into a bundle and sends them back. So this one's a little bit more complex. I'm not gonna go through every step here, uh, but basically uh, we, were, we first request the patient from the fire repository. When we get that back, uh, we just double check to see that we got a, a patient ID back um, because we're starting with an MRN, which is not the same as the fire ID for the patient. So we need to look that up, we need to do a search and we need to make sure that we got a result. So we're gonna look for that patient ID, make sure we have it. If we don't, we're going to fail with an error. Uh, if we do, we're going to go and loop through those fire uh, types that we're looking for. We're gonna request each one, uh, and then we're going to loop through and run the DTL on each one to consolidate them into a single fire bundle, which we're then going to return to our caller, which is our orchestrating business process. Okay, does that make sense so far? Okay. So I keep talking about this DTL, which um, which is doing the consolidation for us, and this is very nice. Again, we're using that fire data model, uh, fire object model, uh, which lets us work with fire in in DTL, um, and. So this is the DTL which consolidates our bundles. So we have a source bundle and we have a target bundle. And really the only thing we need to do is do a for each. That's going to loop through uh, all of the entries in the bundle 
and add them to the bundle in the target object. So we run that once for each of the bundles we received, and in the end we have a single bundle that contains all of the resources that we received. Uh, and then I mentioned the other transformation. I'm sorry, I can't make this bigger, I don't think, um, because it's uh, Eclipse. Um, but uh, I took that uh, single API call for doing the transformation, uh, and I just created a, a basic data transformation class, which um, just makes, basically makes a call to that and returns an SDA object to us. Uh, and that's just nice, because then we can use the standard transform call in the BPL. Okay. All right. So, um, does anybody have any questions about about the sort of the nuts and bolts of that? Okay, great. So uh, that's pretty much all I had. Um, just to kind of sum up, you know, the the idea here is that we want to, you know, a lot of you have worked with HL7 or other standard data types within our interoperability products. Uh, and uh, the idea is that you can do all of your work through our visual tools without really getting into any coding. Uh, and the idea is for, for Fire to be simple like that. Um, so we've provided these tools that do some of the, uh, you know, the more arcane parts of Fire uh, work, and we've packaged them up so you can use them as a toolkit so you can work with Fire just like you would with any other message type in, in Ensemble or Health Connect. So, um, so you have any me? other questions? Oh, go ahead. The fi oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah see, we should, have, we should have reviewed this with Bob, because that was a great suggestion. Sure. Where is it? Schema documentation, there we go. Yeah, so we also have a reference tool um, that uh, allows you to see how we're mapping fire resources to SDA and vice versa. Uh, so let's see, let's look at allergies. Seems like a good one. And we're looking at the mapping from fire, from SDA to fire. We can, we can flip that uh, the other way and look at it as uh, fire to SDA. Um, go to allergy again. Um, and fire allergy intolerance. And we can see here how the various fields in the fire resource map to various fields in SDA over here. You see the SDA target. So this is just a nice reference for, for uh, when you're doing your mappings. And then uh, since in this case we did, we went from fire to SDA to CCDA, uh, we also have a similar tool that shows the mappings from SDA to um, CCD and, and other common doc types like that. All right. Uh, just uh, does, so you guys have already had some requests for fire. It sounds like because people have looked at it. Um, you know, what types of use cases are, are you guys seeing um, in terms of interoperability? Uh, I, I'm setting aside the idea of hey, let's have fire access to, for instance, health care information exchange, patient information. In terms of interoperability, what are you guys seeing? Okay, all right, so they want to add providers to it from, okay, very cool. Anybody else? No? All right, well, I, I promise you, you will have yeah. use cases coming, <laughs> and when, you, when they come, uh, we're going to have the tools here for you, sure. so just upgrade, and then you'll be all ready to go. All right, thanks, everyone. Thank you.